Yo, and what is up, gang? Thank you for checking out Sledgehammer TV tonight. We are two days away from the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view and SmackDown phoned in a go-home show that only had one segment that actually caught my attention. Outside of the Intercontinental Championship stuff with Apollo Crews and Big E, there was nothing really that interesting on this show. You know, Edge and Roman, they're doing their thing, but Edge still hasn't made a decision as to who he's facing, and perhaps... The Tribal Chief has made that decision for him. We are going to talk about all of that and so much more right here and right now. My name is Nick Nightmare. You are watching the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show's SmackDown Review and Reaction Show for Elimination Chamber Weekend. Let's do it. <laughs> You know, to be honest, I don't really mind that Edge hasn't made his decision yet. I just wish that it didn't have such a terrible implication on the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. There was no reason why they needed to have the Elimination Chamber now. There's no reason why we need a fast lane pay-per-view in between the Elimination Chamber and WrestleMania. So I would, if I were in charge, have eliminated that fast lane pay-per-view, made that the Elimination Chamber, and gave us a nice amount of time to build and tell a much more interesting story. Because now it seems almost predictable. Because tonight at the end of SmackDown, after the mandatory weekly six-man tag team matchup, which should have never even happened at all, we had Edge hit the ring, spear Jay Uso, only to be speared himself by Roman Reigns. Setting it all up there the way Vince McMahon wants it to be. Spear versus spear. For WrestleMania, Edge versus Roman Reigns. Now, if this was truly the end game for the main event of WrestleMania, and you're blowing your wad so quickly here, it comes off to me as rushed and kind of just predictable. Everything was just so predictable if that's the way it ends up. That doesn't mean it's going to be that way. He very well could choose the winner of the Raw Elimination Chamber match. But after what happened tonight, do you really see that as a possibility? Edge now is going to have the motivation to go take out the Tribal Chief, not just for the Universal Championship, which is a belt he's never held before, but to get some vengeance. Because the big dog put his hands on the Rated R Superstar, and now the story can start to tell itself as we make our way down to WrestleMania. Because you know Roman is not losing in the Elimination Chamber. You already know this. Or at the Elimination Chamber. He's not even in the Elimination Chamber. But he's going to have a title match. It's probably going to be against Kevin Owens. And he's going to win again. Because there's no way Roman Reigns doesn't go to the main event of WrestleMania. The one thing that kind of gave me a bad taste in my mouth was the way Edge kind of put out there at the start of tonight's SmackDown. Because he started off tonight's show talking about how he's comparing Drew and he's comparing Roman and anybody that he picks is going to be the main event of WrestleMania. Which prompted Roman to come out to confront him because I guess Roman wants an answer just like the rest of us do. And Edge kind of put him in his place. Said Roman Reigns are being insecure because Edge believes he's the main event. No matter who he chooses, if it's Edge versus AJ, that's the main event of WrestleMania. I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. He then went on to list all of the other possibilities and just said that whoever it was, it's the main event because Edge is in it. And I just thought that was a little presumptuous. I know he's a legend. I know he's got championship accolades out the wazoo, and he certainly does deserve to be in a main event of WrestleMania, but is he the main event? That's a little pompous, a little bit arrogant, which you might expect from a guy like the Rated R Superstar Edge. We also had on this show the return of Seth Rollins. Yeah! 
because I guess Vince McMahon loves the sound of this guy's fucking voice. He has nothing else for Seth Rollins to do but week after week after week just come out and sing us a lullaby without actually singing, thank God. But this word, the man's words are like docile notes that put me into a slumber. But the problem is I can't even get into that slumber. I can't fall asleep because Rollins is bored and talking about all of his nonsense and he's going to be the daddy. He's going to be the father for all of us here. And then tonight he wants to bring a lawsuit, officially file a lawsuit because he believes his return was fucked up by the WWE. So apparently he's... He's in cahoots with a law, a lawyer or a law firm somewhere, and he is going to sue the shit out of the WWE. <laughs> I certainly didn't care. You want to talk about a suit? Let's talk about the suit he was wearing. I have a friend of mine that wants to ask a question. Let's let's see. What do you have to say? What do you want to ask Seth Rollins about his jacket? What's that jacket for? <laughs> it's the worst thing ever. I agree, Moss. I absolutely agree. What is with him and his taste in jackets? He's coming out in some of the worst stuff I've ever seen anybody wear. It's like he went into the Rock's closet from the 90s, right? And took one of those really funky rock styles t-shirts that he used to wear where it was open and used to have like gold and silver and lion's faces and stuff on it and really cool designs and logos but he took one of those and then he put a black lapel on it turned it into a suit with matching pants and now he looks like something out of saturday night fever you know the john travolta movie where everybody's doing all this you know it if you're as old as me you know it anyway and i i don't know what would you do if somebody came to you with that get up and said, here, I want you to dress in this tonight when you go out on national TV and don't even put on a shirt underneath. Be a pompous ass and just wear this with your shirt all open and everything's all out and you've got this ridiculous suit on. Go put it on. And it looked like, like, uh, like a silver gold dust suit. It was terrible. What would you do if you could suggest one thing to Seth Rollins? about his wardrobe tonight. What would you say to him? Moss? Moss, what would you say, buddy? Burn it. <laughs> you should burn the jacket. Burn it down. Exactly. Good, good, Moss. That was a very insightful addition to the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show right now. Seth Rollins needs to have his whole wardrobe burned. My good buddy Seth, he loves me so much. He loves me so much, he's got my ass blocked on Twitter. I don't care. I don't care. Because the man comes out, and he just sucks all the life out of the show. He bores the shit out of 99% of the audience, because he just comes out and talks, and what he says doesn't even have any meaning. I'm gonna sue you. I'm gonna file suit, because I was disrespected. I was disrespected. <laughs> I didn't care. You didn't care. Nobody cared. Dick Rennings probably doesn't even care. It's awful. It's awful. It's a waste of everybody's time. And all of this leading to what? Do you care? I don't. I don't. And it's nothing personal. It's really not. It's just what they write for this character of Seth Rollins is just the same thing over we've been listening to him do these things on raw and smackdown for years he comes out and he's either part of the authority and he's just bah, 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 bah. or then he became the 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 <laughs> the the champion right when he got the champion and he was good guy set and he was just bah, 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 bah. and then nobody likes me bah, bah, bah. now he was, was the messiah and it's bah, 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 look at my man bah, bah. Guess he can't wear man buns anymore because Bad Bunny's got the, the market cornered on the man bun situation. Can't confuse Seth Rollins and Bad Bunny. <sighs> wow, this show was terrible. This show was terrible. Bianca Belair also hasn't made any decisions yet. She's teasing who she's going to face. Will she face Asuka? Will she face Sasha Banks? But that's not even the story tonight. They had Bianca Belair show up on SmackDown tonight 
to tease her match with Sasha Banks by placing her in a six-person tag match. Now, I say six-person. I can't say six-woman tag team matchup because these idiots that write this show are buddy Vince and his boy Brucey, baby, decide it's going to be a good idea to take our faults our false Reginald himself. He's going to be Sasha Banks and Bianca Belez tag team partner versus the team of Bailey, Nia Jax, and Shayna Baszler. Now you think this is bad? Wait till I tell you how this match ends. This match ends with Reginald pinning Nia Jax. Now I am no advocate of Nia Jax. We all know this. I hate her and her whole and her character and everything about her presentation on the show. It's as boring as watching Seth Rollins. Right? It's about same equal level for me. And she's got the nerve to come out and talk to Bailey on Ding Dong Del Hello and start making fun of Sasha and Bianca with Shayna Baszler at her side. But th forget this. Nia Jax says this one ridiculous line, which I think was written by a 7th grader. Oh, Sasha Banks thinks she's all hot and stuff. Well, what about me? Hello, look at this. Do I really have to go there? Should I go there? I probably should. You guys, I know you guys want me to go there. But I don't want all of the SJWs raining down on my head because I think Sasha Banks is sexier than Nia Jax. I think any guy with two working eyeballs would think the same thing. And in, you might, don't don't get it twisted, this isn't because Nia Jax is a big woman. Not, not at all. This That might be your assessment of it. Maybe you don't like a little extra cushion with your pushing, and that you're all entitled to the way you feel. I personally do not like a lot of extra cushion, but I won't mind a little meat on a woman. It's nice, it's not bad, but let's just take a look. Facially, you gotta choose between Sasha Banks and Nia Jax. Nia Jax looks like The Rock. She looks like a girl Roman. You wanna bang that? Or do you wanna Take your chances with the boss. I don't know. For me, I would choose Sasha Banks 10 out of 10 times. So she made herself look like a complete idiot. And it was such a childish, ridiculous comment that it didn't come off very well. It was just friggin' stupid. About as stupid as the six-person tag team match that followed this whole interaction with Ding Dong Hello. What a stupid thing to do, putting Reginald, our false, our fake, our lies, in this match, and then he wins this match. The only man in the match of women pins a woman on WWE TV. What does this say about Reginald? Is he the new James Ellsworth? Is he going to be wrestling in the women's division now? Because they realize, oh wait, we already have an R-Truth in the men's division. We need to take him and put him in the women's division because he's pretty much the same thing. So he went from being Carmela Somalier, serving her wine and shit, to tagging with her most hated rival and the winner of the Royal Rumble? Some people are saying this is because R-False has a crush on Sasha Banks. Later on in the night, he would be doing his other job as the sommelier, and he was serving Carmilla her wine, and she was really pissed off, and apparently we are going to see the split of Carmilla and our false. And either way, I don't care. What does it mean for Carmilla? Nothing. What does it mean for our false, Reginald? Is he going to get a singles run of some kind? Are they going to use him to sully the women's division and everything going on with Sasha? I don't know, but it's a terrifying prospect. Terrifying prospect. There was a little bit of good on this show. And it was Apollo Crews and Big E. Now this 
seems a little ass backwards still. Let, let's call a spade a spade. They have ruined this to a point, but with some of the moves they did here tonight, they definitely got me back interested into Apollo Crews versus Big E. This is how it's done. This is the way they should be approaching all segments. With logic. With reason. You see, you have Shinsuke Nakamura and you have Apollo Crews. Both men, I guess, want a shot for the Intercontinental Championship. Apollo Crews has lost three times already. And Shinsuke Nakamura might be up next. And here we have this match. And it wasn't said like the winner gets a shot at Big E or anything like that. But the Intercontinental Champion joined the commentary team. And he was very good this time. Because he wasn't distracting. Big E did the right thing. And he was doing things like putting over Shinsuke Nakamura. Calling him a legend. Saying he deserves respect. Saying he deserves to be fighting with him. Those are the type of competitors Big E wants to fight. And then when questioned by Michael Cole, well, would you give Apollo Crews another shot if he wins this match here? He was like, hell no. No way. I beat him three times already. His time is over. Get out of here with this. Still playing off the whole go back to catering angle so, somewhat from last week. With Apollo Crews. Shinsuke goes on to defeat Apollo in a very nice match. But this was not about the match. This was about what would happen after the match. Following his loss, Apollo Crews would attack Shinsuke Nakamura. This would prompt Big E to get involved because Apollo was going to assault Shinsuke with the steel steps. Big E got in his face, telling him to stop Put the stairs down, go to the back, you're done, get out of here, this is over. Shinsuke laying on the floor in pain. He would go over to assist Shinsuke, try to get him back up to his feet after Apollo Crews put the stairs down and seemed to be calmed down to the point where he was just going to let things be, but you knew that wasn't the case. He would pick the stairs back up again and assault Big E with them, laying him out with ease. He would then bring the steps back into the ring, and when the referee wouldn't really allow him to do anything else, he would take the steps, throw them over the top rope, falling down onto Big E, whose body was still laying on the concrete floor outside. This was really badass. This was really good stuff for Apollo Crews. It's the best he's ever looked. Even though he's lost the last couple of attempts during Big E, it feels like. He feels this is important for himself. The Intercontinental Championship is important. And this is the type of stuff we need to be seeing from superstars. Because a guy like Apollo could go from losing consistently and being considered catering to now being one of the most threatening and serious threats to the Intercontinental Championship. Big E's going to almost have no choice but to give in and give this guy another shot because I feel like Apollo is not going to stop until he does so. Big E would end up being taken out by a medical staff to a local medical facility <laughs> on a stretcher. Then we got the Seth Rollins segment. He's all pissed off. Me crying about Rollins. He said all of the people on the roster are not his friends. They're all a bunch of losers. The biggest loser of them all is Cesaro, and then decided to say goodnight. And I say goodbye, because this was all a waste. And while I will say this, Seth Rollins versus Cesaro, it's going to be a good match. The guy can wrestle, I just can't stand his character. And Cesaro, one of the best pound-for-pound -pound wrestlers in the world today, continues to show week after week why he should be plays higher up the card, and that would be a good a good series for us to go through, a good feud, although if Daniel Bryan is not being used in the main event, I would much prefer to see Seth versus Daniel, I think that would be entertaining as well, just because I hate his character don't mean I don't want to see him wrestle, I don't want to hear him talking anymore, I want you to go out there and wrestle, and I'll be just fine with Seth Rollins, talk less, wrestle more, and stop with the jackets.
They're terrible. Tamina and Natalia defeat the Riot Squad. That's all I'm going to say. This was a terrible match. Sloppy. Full of botches. They wanted to keep talking about this long-time history of friendship between Natty and Tamina. News to me. Look, just because both of them have famous third-generation bloodlines, they're, they've been best friends forever. We've never seen them be friends before in our lives. This is about as effective for Natalia being paired with Tamina as it was giving her a gimmick to walk around in the back farting everywhere. Remember that? Natty Night Fart? I remember it. I'd rather see that again than see Natty thrown with another partner. This time it's just Tamina, which brings her stock value down. If you thought she if she was mad that she was worth a dollar on that stupid Twitter thing, she's going to be really mad because her stock value went down to 50 cents by being put with Tamina Snook. If you were worth more than one dollar, you would have a better fucking chance, a better partner than a fucking Tamina Snook. Oh, oh my God. Awful. Absolutely awful. And then, of course, the mandatory Billy Kay's trying to find a friend segment, which we see every week. It goes from one team to the next. She wants to hand shit out. She's wearing people's t-shirts. She wants to be accepted so much. She tries to celebrate with Tamina and Natalia after the match. And then Tamina beat the hell out of her, kicked her with a super kick, and they walked off. So even the lowest of the low in the women's division don't want nothing to do with Billy Kay. That, <laughs> that says something. That definitely says something. It also says something that all of the work they have done in the last couple of weeks for the Riot Squad kind of goes down the toilet. Because they've been winning, and they've been looking good, and then you do this and have them lose, and it puts them right back where they started. It's essentially 50-50 booking. We're used to it. It doesn't make it right. But here we are, nonetheless. We've seen... Constable King Dickhead, Baron Corbin backstage talking to Edge, talking about his fancy watch and his stupid suit, you know, trying to be Ric Flair, essentially. Look at my expensive jacket. Look at my Rolex watch. Woo! I'm going to go get Lacey Evans pregnant. <laughs> no, he didn't say that, obviously. But Edge didn't care. Edge ended up mocking Baron Corbin the way we all do. And just left him hanging in the back. That was another interesting thing on the night. Edge's uh, backstage interactions with some random people. We've seen him in the back with a Cesaro. We've seen him in the back with Daniel Bryan. And these are all very, very tasty and tantalizing. Tantalizing. Tasty and tasty and tantalizing. I'll get it right. Tasty and tantalizing. <laughs> Scenarios. For future matchup matchups. Give me Edge versus Daniel Bryan any day. Edge versus Cesaro, I'm there. Just take my money. Take it right now, please. Ding dong, hello. That should be a no-brainer. This segment was awful. We talked about it enough already that I'm not talking about it again. All you need to know is that Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks, although being forced together on this team tonight, were still giving little jabs at one another, playing at their possible future matchup and laying the seeds, planting the seeds for that story to develop in a decent way. Sasha Banks, Bianca Belair, Reginald, R. Falls, defeat Nia, Shayna, and Bailey. The match itself, aside from the whole thing with Reginald, was just meh at best. The girls can wrestle. There's nothing wrong with that, but the whole thing, all of the... The storyline aspect and the Reginald being involved and then getting the pin, just it just was all completely wrong. And then all the guys on the announce table and everybody on social media is all, Oh my God, Reginald! Hey, Reginald got the win! They were selling it like a major shock. I got some of the most respected people on the internet that I follow, that I look to sometimes for news and information tweeting on Twitter how fantastic it is that Reginald got a win and I just want to take a hammer to the head and do this like this. Not to anybody else, to myself, to keep me from having to read the rest of this shit for the rest of the night because it was terrible. 
terrible seeing that kind of stuff. This is why we're in the state that we're in. Because you fans like that and people that just accept shit like this. You, you watch and you don't complain and you don't put your two cents in and you don't say anything and you just accept it and you clap. You're doing more harm than good. Just like seeing Tiny Dad and Giant Baby Son does more harm than good to not only themselves, but to all of us for having to watch this shit on SmackDown. So Ray and Dominic are being fed to Chad Gable and Otis tonight. They will uh, win this matchup the way the Mysterios always win matchups, which means their opponents get themselves disqualified. They don't think enough of Ray or Dominic to start pushing this kid on his own or giving Ray Mysterio any respect. They have this tag team match tonight. The tag team champions, the dirty, dirty, diggity dogs, were out on commentary. They were more concerned with uh, taking jabs at the Street Profits. They had their little solo cups and they were making fun of their former champions who have nothing to do with anything that's going on in the ring at the time. But this match was terrible. This was a terrible match with a terrible finish. It wasn't long at all. It was spotty and sloppy. And then the finish came when the ref called for a disqualification for no reason. Uh, seemingly because Otis hit Dominic Mysterio, who was not the legal man. Has anybody ever been disqualified for attacking a tag team partner on the outside? How many times have we seen that happen for them to break up the tag? You want to stop your partner from making the tag? You hit the guy on the outside. You don't get disqualified, do you? Maybe in recent years, but that ain't how it's supposed to be. I could tell you that. So they got disqualified. And then after the match, Otis seemingly turned heel by delivering a top rope body splash onto an already injured Rey Mysterio. Why? Guy's a natural baby face. He's got tons of charisma. You didn't even give him anything when you had him as the money in the bank briefcase holder. You gave him nothing to cling to and now you're just going to change him over to the other side. Is this possibly what we need from an Otis? I don't know. I think I I really much prefer the story of Gable and Otis imploding because they're both on opposite ends of the spectrum. And Chad Gable, although he's trying to be a good guy and bring out the best in Otis, is actually doing it in a terrible way, costing Otis a lot of victories, making him look foolish more often than not which would prompt Otis to want to bash his head in like a Thanksgiving ham. But that's not where we're going here, I guess. We're reestablishing them as a tag team. Ziggler and Rude were outside to witness all this, and they didn't seem to understand it any more than you or I did. So, so much for that. Edge talked to Daniel Bryan in the back, and this was so good to me. If they didn't really even say that much, but it was really good. Really good stuff. And the prospect of DB versus Edge just sends me right through the roof. Kevin Owens then would approach Daniel Bryan and Cesaro in the back after the little interaction with Edge. They were talking about their six-man match tonight and whether or not they can stay on the same page. And Kevin Owens assured them that he's not going to be turning on his partners. Uh, they mocked Kevin Owens because he has a history of turning on his partners. Daniel Bryan also made a little joke insinuating Chris Jericho or mentioning Chris Jericho without actually making Chris Jericho. Daniel Bryan saying that there's a big name he's forgetting and he wishes he had a list to remember some of the people that Kevin Owens has turned on. I thought that was pretty interesting, a little tongue-in-cheeky and kind of a nod to Jericho without actually saying, hey, how you doing, Chris? You know, so props for that. Props for that. They announced Nia Jackson and Shayna Baszler are going to get the up... I'm sorry, are going to be forced to defend their championships against Sasha Banks and Bianca at the Elimination Chamber, thanks to Reginald, I guess. So, 
maybe one upside for our false winning that match i don't know don't you think it would have been better having them earn it themselves but what is with the wwe and putting their women's champions in the in whatever's going on with the tag division we just sat through oscar being handcuffed to charlotte flair and then put into this women's tag team situation and now we're doing it again we did it when sasha was fighting with bailey it all this it doesn't have to all be the same storyline separate it a little bit do something interesting just like you should have done with the six men in the elimination chamber let's take a look one more time this is what we got coming up at the elimination chamber on the smackdown side of the game this sunday and honestly instead of doing the traditional predictable six-man tag where everybody at the end gets their finishing moves in leading into the pay-per-view this sunday they could have done something infinitely better and you know we're not just about pooping on this show and giving out poop hammers we're about telling you how it could have been better as well and one of the main ways it could have been and should have been better is if they took these six men and gave us three singles matches between them the winner of each goes on at the end of the night to the main event of smackdown this evening on the go home show and the winner of that triple threat match gets to be the last person to enter in the chamber that's how you book a go home show you made all this all this what's even the word all this hullabaloo i don't even know the word i'm gonna make up words all this hibbity jibbity about the raw elimination chamber and who is going to go last you went so far out that you had to do a gauntlet match to determine this and since you couldn't pull that out of your ass twice in the same week you said let's let's just have a six man instead a meaningless six-man tag with no stakes nothing to do with anything about sunday let's just get these six guys in there and let them practice a little bit the quality of the tag team match was just fine it was a good main event it was a good six-man tag team match i liked edge on commentary he wasn't overbearing he wasn't distracting he was just fine i did not like when they brought paul Heyman out to be the counterpoint to edge fighting with him on every single point he tried to make on the commentary desk while I was trying to enjoy the action in the ring, which included Daniel Bryan, Kevin Owens, Cesaro, Jey Uso, and Sami Zayn. Five of the best in-ring talents that the SmackDown roster has. Oh, and King Dickhead was there too. But Jey Uso hasn't won a match since November. You think he's going to win the Elimination Chamber? absolutely not king corbin is absolutely worthless is he gonna win the elimination chamber no Sami Zayn. they made him look like a chump at the beginning of this show and pretty much every week he should just focus on making his documentary because he's not gonna win daniel bryan is a possibility cesaro kind of is the one that has the kofi kingston-esque fan support going into the elimination chamber although they're not there to show it in person and then there's Kevin Owens, the obvious favorite choice, not favorite in a good way, but favorite as in the odds for winning this matchup, probably going to go on to face Roman. And honestly, I don't think I'd have it any other way as much as I'm bored with Owens and Reigns. I don't want them to burn out Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan in a one-off at the Elimination Chamber, nor would I want them to do that to Cesaro. So, what other choice is there? There is no other choice. Kevin Owens is going to win the Elimination Chamber this weekend. The end of the show, like I said, was just the traditional, predictable, yearly, huge brawl between all six combatants going into the El Elimination Chamber this Sunday. I'm going to be here to bring the hammer down on it when all is said and done we went off the air as roman reigns was posing over the fallen rated r superstar after they exchanged spears <clears throat> well not exchanged but as i told you at the beginning of the show edge hit jay uso with the spear followed by roman reigns sneak attack 
jumping in, hitting his own spear on edge, and on to the elimination chamber we go. Thank you guys so much for being here once again with me tonight for this SmackDown review and reaction show where we bring the hammer down like nobody else. 100% start to finish Poop Hammer Certified episode. The only exception goes to my boy Big E, the Intercontinental Champion, Apollo Crews, and Shinsuke Nakamura as well because his match with Apollo was very good. His stuff that he's been doing for the last couple of weeks is very good, and he deserves just as much credit as the other two gentlemen for keeping my interest strong in what's going on in the IC title hunt. Wish Edge would have made his decision by now, but as we said, they kind of maybe gave him no choice. So will we be seeing Edge fighting Roman at WrestleMania? Maybe by the time Sunday wraps up, we will find out. My name is Nick Nightmare. This is the team, Thor the Sledgehammer, the official Sledgehammer, the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, his tag team partner, the world heavyweight champion of all the microphones in all the world, Mr. Blue, the snowball, most important member of the team as always, each and every one of you. And now you can do your part, smash that like button if you haven't done so already, especially if you had a good time here with us at Sledgehammer TV tonight. It really does help us out in the metrics and analytics on YouTube. Share this video with each and every one of your wrestling buddies all over the wrestling world, especially if they will have a good time with us and you think they will get what we're doing in here as the sledgehead sledgehead army continues to grow day by day don't forget to drop me a comment let me know what you think about tonight's smackdown let me know what you think is going on at the elimination chamber i want to know who you think is going to win what are your choices let me know in the comments section down below and most importantly if you are not already a sledgehead of the sledge nation that we are growing strong here. Now is the time to hit subscribe so that you don't miss anything that we do here on this channel. All of our Monday night and Friday night reviews and pay-per-view reviews as well. Just like this Sunday at the Elimination Chamber. If you missed anything this week, don't forget to hit the annotations up above and catch up on some of the best stuff you ain't seen yet. Because nobody does wrestling reviews like we do here on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. That, my friends, is going to do it. We are out of here, and we will see you next time right here on your new favorite wrestling show, the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, only on Sledgehammer TV, right here on YouTube.com. There's Rollins. Give him another poop hammer. Rollins. What's that jacket for? It's the worst.